Hey guys, Shaw here. There's a ton of information out there and sometimes it's hard to filter through everything. When gearing a new character or trying to optimize your main, it's natural to want to have the desire to target the items that you're going to need to put yourself in the best possible position to succeed in the shortest amount of time. Today, we are taking a look at one of my favorite websites around World of Warcraft and an incredible resource for both Mythic Plus and Raid. While some of you may be aware of the site, I want to talk about why I use it on a daily basis and maybe some tricks that you may not be aware of. And this site is called subcreation.net. This site is incredible. At its core, it analyzes leaderboards and logs and attempts to answer some of the most common questions around World of Warcraft, like what is the best class to play and how best to play it. Let's see what it does. Before we get started, I do want to say that the data presented on this site represents the top ladder of the Mythic Plus community. Just because a class is considered a lower tier on the site doesn't mean that it doesn't have a place in keys. A great player can make a bad class decent as long as you bring a Destro Warlock and a Survival Hunter. With that out of the way, let's jump in. The core purpose of the site is to present data regarding a specific class, specs viability, or even dungeon per affix. This data is aggregated from both Warcraft logs and Raider IO, and it looks at the top 100 runs of each dungeon and each spec. Honestly, the statistical element of this and how the tier lists are composed are way, way above my pay grade. While not perfect, the tier lists mostly feel accurate, but again, I can't stress this enough, shouldn't be used to discriminate against certain specs since the data they are taking from is well above the top 1% of players. More often than not, the top 1% of players are going to be leading towards what is going to bring the most damage, the most healing, and the most survivability. What's also really, really nice about this site is that it sorts the affixes for you. Luckily, we have already seen 10 weeks of affixes, so there's a ton of data on this. I like using this to figure out which keys are going to give me the smallest headache. Spoiler, it's Necrotic Wake. Besides that, it's great to know which keys you should be wary of when pushing IO. As you filter through the weeks, you can see certain dungeons move up and down the tier list. This means that there are some weeks where it might be better to chase a Mist of Tirna Scythe for an upgrade, or maybe a Theater of Pain for example. Though the biggest component of this site is actually going to be the data that it contains. So let's take a look at Guardian Druid. You can do this in one of two ways. You can either use the navigation bar at the top of the screen or by clicking on the icon in the tank list. This page averages data from the past four weeks and will also display how many different characters are being represented as well as the difficulty of the key level that it's representing. You can always find this at the top of the page. Once you start scrolling down, you'll notice that is it's all divided into categories. You'll be able to jump back and forth between the different sections of the page if you'd like. For example, if we want to check out what trinkets Guardian Druids are running, we can simply click on trinkets and it'll jump us right down. Now all of this data is contained on the same page, so you should be able to easily find everything here. We can see that an outstanding 97% of tanks are actually running scale as their primary choice of trinket. The secondary trinket they're running might differ depending on what trinkets they have access to. So while some players like to raid a lot, and might have access to cash or sigil. Some players spend more time doing dungeons, so you'll see items like a Codex or Soleil's Technique. You can also see which weapon enchants players are using, as well as their different covenants and soul binds. A nice little additional feature that I like about the site is that you can actually click on these links and they will take you to the logs that they were ran in. So for example, we can actually see that there was a 28 completed by a Night Fade Druid, which is something that you'd probably say is pretty uncommon due to the fact that Aventhyr is the majority of the population. So what we can do is we can actually click on this and open up the log that it was done in. But what we can then do is access the log and take a look at their build. So you can use this to see what legendaries they were running. This player specifically was actually running their Unity plus Nature, the Natural Order's Will. You can also see their Conduit, Soulbinds, Talents, and Gear. And you can also see their pull breakdown by looking at this log. So really, really nice aspect of this site. Just like all things data and analytical, you have to take it with a grain of salt, or you have to read into it a little bit. Just because the current top build was running this set of talents doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. Now, for the most part, you'll see some pretty outstanding choices that will take up either the majority or all 100% of a certain talent choice, for example, Ren and Tear, but then you're going to see some pretty decent changes in, let's just say, the 40, the 40 talent row with Mass Entanglement, Mighty Bash, or Heart of the Wild. Now there's tons of reasons to maybe swap these around depending on either the dungeon or your group composition, but can be a viable change up if needed. 
You also have things like rest affinity versus balance affinity. More often than not, you're going to see the balance affinity being ran, but doesn't mean that rest affinity is totally out of the question. There are times where you're either running with a healer who has less throughput, or you need a little bit of more increased healing for a certain boss fight. Another really nice thing about the site as well, again, it also represents or presents all of the data regarding most of your top soulbind builds. Now, if you're a specific um, either a Kyrian bear or Necro bear for this specific example, sometimes it's hard to find this type of data because just no one's really playing certain soul binds. If you're looking for M and I as a as a guardian druid and what to run, that data is not going to be represented here, and that's when I would point you over to Wowhead. But for the most part, you're going to find a lot of your different information here, which is performing best and which is performing worst based on data taken over the last four weeks. So just as a, a, another quick example, let's head back to the main page, check out the DPS tier list and take a look at something that might be very specific. Um, of course, we're gonna see something like your Destro Locks and your Surf Hunters at the top, while things like Affliction Lock or Feral Druid are gonna be towards the bottom. Let's take a look at Survival Hunter, because I think this is gonna yield a few different results. Because most players are playing, actually, you know what? I think a better example of this would be Rep Paladin. Rep Paladin is a pretty low D tier fix, but it's something that I tend to play fairly often in anywhere from the 15 to 20 range, and I thoroughly enjoy the spec. But if you scroll down and start looking at some of these affix or some of these soulbind traits and setups, you're gonna find that it is extremely overwhelmed by Kyrian soulbind abilities. So if you're, for some reason, I don't know why I'm even going over this, but if you're a Venthyr Rep Paladin, this isn't going to necessarily present you with the data that you need because it's taken from the top 100 keys and unfortunately just venthyr isn't right now the play you will see them represented in the soulbind category but you will not see them represented over in the soulbind abilities so that's a little bit more specific but i did want to hint on it lastly what i love about the site is it also provides you with a ton of other resources some of these i might end up going over in the future if you guys end up liking this video but you're going to see Dranos's Raider IO weekly route. You're going to see the Wago IO routes as well as Keystone Guru. This is a site that I have used for some of my routes as well. And then there's some great other Mythic Plus centric websites here, like Best Keystones, Questionably Epic, as well as the Titan Forge podcast and things like Just Heal Us. So just ending on one last note, what's really, really nice about the site is if you're a new player or a player who is trying to better themselves when it comes to gear or secondary stats or what questioning what trinkets they should be running or if you're kind of hitting a wall let's just say you're pushing and you're you know you're able to do 18s pretty regularly but you're really struggling at getting over that maybe like that 19 or 20 level using a site like this is really going to help you because you may not you might have had some oversight on something and this will give you some clarity hope you guys enjoyed this video and this quick little recap the link for the site of course will be down below if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me and i will do my best to answer them I don't work with this site. I, um, I just tend to use it a lot. So hope you guys are staying happy, healthy, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.